Get here. I'm here. I'm here. Don't panic. No, I'm not panicking. You're not panicking. No. Hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. I'm Steve. And I'm Mark. And this is Smokey Steve and Mark. Yes. It welcome is. or welcome back. Yes. Speak welcome, everybody. Speaking of Smokey, happy Friday. Happy Friday, everybody. I'm totally, totally understanding all this nine to five stuff. Now, now. that you're a nine to five, Friday, you get to get? I was never excited about Fridays. Ever! Well, you worked every Friday. Friday was busy. Saturday was busy. So, I mean, it was crazy. Yeah. But um, now I'm like, oh, it's Friday. Because not only do I have... This is the longest possible time before you have to go to work again. Yes! Right. It so, is! Nowhere to be tonight. You can uh, stay up late tonight and tomorrow night. And tomorrow night. It's two a, nights in a row. It's so exciting. It's a very big deal. Um, yeah, but I, I two weeks down at my new job. Mm -hmm. It's going well. It's going well. Yeah, that sounds good. And... Nice. Already, Monday, I move into my new office. How swank. My right? own office. Mm -hmm. All the furniture was there today. Mm -hmm. My new computer came. Like, I'm like, oh my gosh. The first time ever I've had my own office. I'm so excited. Revel in it. I know, right? Well, you've had an office. I just, it's this very is the, exciting. This is the first job where I ever had my first office. Yeah. First thing I did, throw away all the shit from the last bitch. Had my office. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm doing. Just got rid of all of it. I, I'm doing that too. She has these curtains. Uh, the last person that was in there had these curtains with a huge peacock on it. No. Eh. I'm no. getting rid of that. I'm not too, I'm not too. I don't like peacocks too much. No. Peacock feathers are really cool. Well, I don't mind but... peacocks, but... Not on the curtain. Not on the curtain. I mean, and, and it's one peacock. It's a huge peacock covering all the panels of it. it, it and I like weird stuff and funny stuff and yeah. cool stuff. And but I, I don't like these curtains. Yeah. So they're they're going down. No. Yeah. Well. But anyway, so I'm I'm really excited about that. I see my first patients on Monday. Um, but I'll but as a um. I don't know what you would call like, like my, the doctors in there with me. You're gonna be shadowing exactly. Patients. I'll be shadow like I'll be like like they're coming into my office and the but the doctor will be there or the therapist will be there yeah. as I take them. So I'm in like in house training like yeah. And then I have these uh, trainings that I actually go to. They're all they're all starting starting to be scheduled now. Yeah. I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna be tested and stuff. Ooh, it's been a while. Yeah, I gotta get some initials after your name. I know, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm saying you already have an associate's degree. Yeah, I have that. So you already have a two year degree. Yeah. Um, yeah. it's just thickening up some of your drug and alcohol. Mm -hmm. There'll be mostly certifications. Like, yeah. I don't think he's gonna send me back to college to get like my master's or no. anything. Well, but... that's what I have is a certification. Yeah. You know, just something to mm -hmm. get your foot in the door. Yeah. So yeah, and then cool. you earn more as the more hours you spend with people and this and that and like it is interesting but uh, um so anyway that is like mm -hmm. the update of my new employment it's going well but i'm tired i'm still struggling with the schedule i it's probably i think it's gonna take probably another week or so because yeah. i'm still kind of I, i'm having trouble getting to sleep at a good time so then in the morning i'm kind of like you know run down a little but yeah but that'll that'll whoops you spilled. I spilled a little because it's the weekend. It and is we the now weekend. have matching mugs. This is so cool. We do. Matching Thanks, matching Mayor. mugs, matching Thanks, sweaters. Mayor. Ching ching. Look like gay bookends. <laughs> Speaking of gay stuff, we thought tonight Mark and I would share with you. We've done this before, but we have some a new long folks. A time ago. A thousand years ago, back when I was getting about 20 views <laughs> of a video. <laughs> And my have we grown. <laughs> so we're going to share with you the story of how we met. Yeah. Kind of a treat, I guess. Well, because yeah, I guess it is. Well, I guess it is. It, and it well, people have been asking and I, we just never really yeah. uh, addressed it. We never really did it, you know, like officially. officially. And we're kind of an odd couple. So yeah. it, it begs the question, how did all this happen? How did this happen? So... Um, Gosh, we should revisit it because, uh, God, I don't even know how it happened. I don't either. And the last five years have just been a blur. Mark and blur. I have been together about five and a half years. Yeah. It'll be six in, six in April, April of 2020. Mm -hmm. So um, well, We've known each other a lot longer than that. So. Yeah, we met in... It was October. You know the dates. Like, I'm not good <laughs> with the years. <laughs> it was October 2nd? Am I good with dates? I thought No, I was. no, no, no. October 1st? Oh yeah, it was October. You're right. It, it was. was October because 
It was. It was. Like, no, it was November. November 2nd. That's right. That's was right. November I was in the hospital on Halloween. Yes, that's right. November okay. 2nd of 2010. Yes. We were in rehab. Rehab. Well, I was in rehab. You arrived that day. I arrived that day. Yes. I had already been there for a month. Yeah. Um, and we were way out in the middle of nowhere. We were in Belleville, Pennsylvania. If you've never been to Belleville, it's a population of 120, and the pastor is the barber. Yeah. Which explains our haircuts at the time. Yes. Um, yes. It was a very small house, like 18 guys. At we the were most, crammed yeah, in we were there. crammed in this house and we weren't allowed to leave. No, I mean, we were we, getting life saving drug and alcohol treatment. We so were. It's not that we didn't we need, were. We didn't, you know, we needed to be there. Yeah. But um, it was interesting very circumstances. Uncomfortable. Yeah. Uncomfortable. It was freezing cold and the house was so hot and we were all jammed in there and when you left your bedroom in the morning you were not allowed to go back to your bedroom until night 10 o'clock at 10 night. o'clock at night you got it up at sucked. like 6 30 and then i hated night. that re i hated it so bad it was horrible but the first day you were there you were at the admissions chair because yeah. they had a chair because it was a house yeah and i saw a guy in wind pants Jesus sandals, a windbreaker, and he had Bon Jovi hair. Like, <gasps> frosted, and it was like a long on the top, <laughs> and you looked spent. I was spent. So me and the other gay guy were taking bets. There was another gay guy also named Steve, and we were taking bets on whether or not you were gay, because we couldn't <laughs> tell because you wouldn't open your mouth. So we go outside to have a cigarette, and we're like, you ask him. No, you ask him. Well, maybe it'll just come up. Ugh. So then we're like asking probing questions. And we're like, well, what kind of music do you like? And you said Madonna. And we were like, gay. He's gay. So... You know, we figured that much out. And then we were like a little click the whole time we were there. Yeah, we ended up becoming close. We were, we were, we were a click. Yeah. We were a little click. Now, I started catching feelings for you while we were in treatment. Um, especially towards the end. Because we would always partner off and do stuff. We, they would yeah. take us to 12-step meetings. We would sit next to each other in the druggy buggy. That yeah. van they drive van. us all out in. Yeah. Um, yeah. And when you left, I was hysterical. I was inconsolable. Me and Steve, the other gay guy, were... Um, you didn't even turn around and say goodbye when you left, by the way. You just walked right out the door. But, see ya, bye! <laughs> Pretty much. I can understand that you hated it there. Oh, did I ever. And I stayed, not as long as you, but I stayed two months, it was. They I, had me in that IO4Q, what, I don't know what it's called, 4P, T3C, what is it called? 3C. That's 3C 45 program. to 90 days. Yeah, and so. I did uh, 60, I think, because I left after Christmas, but before New Year's. I did the full 90. I stayed till New Year's. New yeah. Year's Eve is the day that I left mm -hmm. there and went to a halfway house. Mm -hmm. So, And I left there and went to, went to a halfway house. I did. Yeah, you went, went to one to in Altoona. Altoona, Pennsylvania. I went to Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. It was a treat. So was Wilkes Bear. Uh -huh. So, but it, that that stay was really quite interesting. Steve and I were friends. We spent like all of our downtime together talking, and I met his mom. She came up to yep, visit, and I met visit. mom that yeah. time. And uh, he would keep me. I mean, I was down and out. Like I, it, he kept me in cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, my parents would send me like a carton of cigarettes a week. Yeah, God she, bless them. He, he would um, um, give me some, and. Um, and I, I don't know how I would have got through that rehab stay without you, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but I can't, honestly, I didn't have feelings for him, though. I, yeah. It didn't even cross my mind at I had, all. I had told one of the technicians, I said, look, I caught feelings. I said, what do I do? Do I have a big soap opera moment or do I just shut up and let it go? And he said, shut up and let it go. So <laughs> I did. I just shut up, and, at least until you left. So I didn't know you were like like, devastated when I left. I didn't realize that. Well, I mean, I was also, like, 90 days sober. Yeah, Everything's the end of the world yes, when you're 90 days sober. The mail's late and you want to go drink. Yeah. You know, so... Yeah. Um, you, oh, yeah. you went to Altoona, I went to there, and we kept in touch by letter. Mm -hmm. We were writing back we're and writing, forth. Yeah. Not really, because you have limited use of telephones in a halfway house, mm -hmm. and they don't want you to have cell phones because you're supposed to be recovering. Yeah. So we just wrote letters. Mm -hmm. And then you had left the halfway house and went to Erie. I think I left what, or what, what happened? What, oh, maybe? I did. I left early. I, uh, I, again, I didn't like now this, the halfway house I went to was pyramid and it was in Altoona and it was built into an, a very old church and it was creepy. Let me tell you, I mean, there was all these passageways and like, 
it w it was creepy and it was huge. There was I think forty of us in this house, mm -hmm. and uh, very very restricted. Um, it was now I got a job my first week there. I went out and I got a job, and I was like, they want me right away, what, and you're not allowed to right away. But they gave me special permission, and I got a job at a restaurant, and I started working right away. Thank heavens because I, yeah. I would have went nuts there and then I started cooking in the house for all the guys too so I, I kept busy but I really hated it and one day you know when you make that decision you just when go. your desire desire to leave and desire to do bad things is more than your desire to do good things you're off to you, you know go. and I did I went and I left for work that morning and I did go to work mm-hmm and I left work and I went to the train station and I took a train to Pittsburgh <laughs> <laughs> and um, did bad things. <laughs> so you relapsed. I relapsed. I did. So you had bounced around a bit. I finished at the halfway house and moved back in with my parents. Yeah, so this puts us right. up into the beginning spring of like 2011. Yeah. So you're bouncing around. You end up back in treatment at some point. I did. I, I was in Pittsburgh, and I went to a couple other cities, and I ended up in Erie. Mm -hmm. I went to Erie, and I, um, I went, I'm sorry, I went back to treatment is what happened. I went back to treatment, and then they put me in the halfway house in Erie. Mm -hmm. I completed treatment at Co Forge, and I went into a halfway house, uh, Gadenzia, in Erie, and that was a very good time for me. Erie was a very nice place. I completed that. I got an apartment in Erie. Um, and that lasted for, I don't know, a few months. Again, we're up until the fall again. We're into the fall. So I think that was the following year? Or was that two it's years It's still later? fall 2011. Okay. While so, you're doing all this, I'm drunk on a futon drinking mouthwash. And I didn't know this. We have the... been touched this whole time. Oh, I'm, I'm pretending I'm fine. Yeah. I'll only call when I'm sober. I only write letters. So, I mean, you have no idea that I've relapsed mm, I didn't in know. a very bad way. No. Watching Real Housewives of New Jersey. Yeah. Juggling. Blistering. And then I, yeah. then I ended up relapsing in Erie. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember calling Stephen and saying, I... I did it again, and I, you know, I don't know what to do. Like, I don't, I mean, do I go back to treatment? Like, you know, like, I mean, I'm a lost cause. Blah, blah, blah. And he talked me down and everything, and um, I, that's when I, I think I left Erie and mm -hmm. came to Pitt, to here. Well, you went, you must have went to treatment again, because I Clemmar is a halfway house. So you, I think you must have gone did to I come rehab. Here? Oh, I came here from Clemmar. Yeah. That's right. Co for yes, I went to Co Forge, yes. Yeah. And that's right, I went to Co Forge twice, right. And that's the one that took, right. Finally that was the one that took. And Co Forge for me was a very, very good place. I had been there a couple times and this time it was good and it and it worked and I did go to a halfway house that I stuck it out. I went to the one he went to. So that brought That's him. when I called you. I was wondering, I wanted to go somewhere closer to you, to yeah. someone I knew and maybe make a fresh start somewhere. So yeah. I'm living with my parents up here in Northeast PA and yes. now he moves into the half, half halfway house up here in Northeast PA. So now yeah. we're, we're only half an hour away mm -hmm. from each other. And he came to visit me um, a couple times. I did. Yeah. I was still drinking at and the I time. And I didn't know he was drinking. So the kind of like half deal I had with my parents was like I have to be sober a couple days. Yeah before we go down so that way i'm not shaky and stank and drunk and yeah everything i didn't i didn't know any of this oh no this is i'm keeping this all to myself yeah the entire time so um you finished there and then you I got an apartment there. i got an apartment for a little bit and then my roommate relapsed and i was freaked i didn't know what to do mm -hmm. but i remember the first week or second week i moved into this apartment it was a nice apartment it was pretty sweet yeah. um Stephen came to visit me. I had no furniture yet, nothing at all. There was an air mattress, I yeah. think. Yeah. And we laid down on, and again, I had no feelings for him at all, just a friend. I did mm. not know any of this. I didn't know that he kind of maybe was interested or not. And we laid on that air mattress and we watched Scream 4. 4? Wasn't it? Scream yeah. 4 we watched on this little TV on an air mattress. Mm -hmm. And you were eating scoops <laughs> with crumbled feta or blue cheese. And I was having a bagel with that honey... Almond, oh yes, I was um, working at a bakery. Honey walnut cream cheese spread on it. Yeah, red flag. I'm telling you, I think I mentioned this last the eating disorder bit. Yeah. I can't tell you a lot of stuff, but exactly what we what ate that eat? night, he'll remember. I everything. can remember. Yeah. We had that, and then we slept. I made that actually. I, I was working at a bakery, and we made our own cream cheeses there. He's never made it since. I've asked for five years. <sighs> um, but at any rate, I stayed over. I remember cutting. Kind of, trying to like grab your arm a little and you kept going like this because you were sleeping 
Oh, really? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> I did all the things you do when you like somebody. I think I burned you a CD. Um, yes, I, you did. I, I remember that. I stayed over. And then you had had some family business come up. So you had to go back to Pittsburgh on short notice. I did. There was family business and I did. So I stayed over the night there and then I went home. That was when my stepfather was sick, I believe. Yeah. And he ended up um, dying quite some time later. But I think from that, if I remember the timeline, mm -hmm. he had cancer. And uh, I think he had a heart attack. That, it was something pretty traumatic, but I didn't care about him. I cared about my mother is what I cared about because she was disabled and she was alive at that time. I had no idea mm -hmm. where she was or what was going on. Mm -hmm. So I remember I went down to the train station. It was snowing. I yeah. remember that day distinctly. And I left you in the apartment. Yeah. I mean, we talked about it. I didn't just, you know. Yeah. But... No, but it was nice because I was living with my parents. It was nice to sleep somewhere that wasn't home. And then you drank there. I did. On the way back, I walked you partway to the train station. Yeah. And on the way back from the train station, I bought a fifth of vodka. And I, I, got, I was like, finally, I can drink in peace, and I don't have to, <laughs> don't have to steal. Don't have me. to act. Don't have to. Don't do have to do. act. Don't have to chew right? gum. Don't have to like. Oh no, I'm fine. I'm just tired. <laughs> <laughs> so I did that, and then event. I think what came up is that you decided to leave there, the, the apartment. The apartment. My my roommate relapsed. I didn't know what to do. I I was I didn't know what to do. So I moved in with another friend of mine who I worked with at the bakery. She took me in. And I stayed there for a little bit, and then I visited you. Then you came and stayed with I me. I came and my parents and stayed with him and his parents for a few days, um, and they liked him. And they did. They and I, you know, I'm always so grateful that they had allowed me to come in because I mean, they you, don't really, know, you know, you like, were some rando from rehab that you liked <laughs> that I liked, and like, oh no, he'll be fine. Let Mom, I like this visit. guy. Sure, yeah. he's just fresh off the dope, but yeah, yeah right. <laughs> Um, and then I went, um, and then I got a job opportunity in Pittsburgh and I thought it was exactly what I should do. Yeah. I thought, oh, this was, this is great, great, great. The guy even sent like, uh, uh, bus fare for me to get to Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. I thought, wow, this is really great. So I left and it, all these times I left him like to pursue what I thought was trying to better my life. You know, I didn't realize every time that it was like. I was crushed. Like every crushed single every single time, single time I left. And left. there was a few times I did this trying to, you know, trying to maybe make some decisions for myself in my life. Yeah. You know? Now it was lost on me that there's nothing too really attractive about a three hundred pound bulimic chain smoking alcoholic. Like that wasn't in the front of my mind. I was like, well, maybe I'm not attractive to him right now. <laughs> you know, because I'm not really trying to do what he's doing in like getting his life together. I'm just killing time until he loves me. So <laughs> like I'm just waiting him out. Oh my god. But not doing much about it. So I you didn't left know any of that. You went to Pittsburgh and came back and then you left again on a longer trip, I believe. Well, I thought I was gonna move. I thought that again, I thought this was what I should do. I always wanted to live out west, so I found a recovery house in California and mm -hmm. I was gonna go move to California and start over and I made it as far as Phoenix. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did and freaked out and I came back. Yeah. Basically, I mean, it was a little longer than that, but I, 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 I did freak out. I called him. I remember talking to you on the yeah. phone. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know. I, it, I went, I, I went to a meeting. I went to a meeting in Felix at, in Phoenix. That's right. I went to an AA meeting, and uh, I was, I, I, I was completely freaked out. And I was like, you know, what do you think? Do you think I can come back and stay with you again? I think I had. Hold on, I have to ask mom. Yeah, I, and she, he had to ask his room. And for something that big, mom and dad have to talk. Like, yeah. mom can't sign off on that. I don't know if dad could sign off on that. They have to agree. And I me I said, maybe I could stay for a know, little longer. A little longer. Like maybe a month or maybe so. Month. Maybe find a job there just to get back on my feet. So we found a job, of course, within a few So I came days. back. They said yes. Yeah, they said it was okay to come. Yeah. And we originally were sleeping in different bedrooms. Yeah. But Mark likes to fall asleep with a TV and a plate full of food. So we were sleeping in my sister's old bedroom. And I was on a futon. And he was on a very small mattress right next to the futon right on the next, floor. Right next to the floor. Yeah. Totally platonic. That was so comfortable. It was really I nice. loved that oh, setup. And we were like top to toe. I was up in the we air here. Was, we should I really get there. We should really get like a day bed or something. I know. We Pull should it out forget the king size. We should get like a day I bed. know, right? It was so but yeah, we like inches apart from each other and it never crossed my mind. Like Yeah, no, totally nothing. platonic. Yeah. No. So we did that and then I ended up going to rehab at that point. Because, yeah, he left me at his parents' house. Yeah, so I had... I was like... And I was on probation at the time, so it really wasn't my choice. I yeah. was... 
I had violated my probation, so I was in jail for three weeks, and then they furloughed me from jail to the rehab. Mm -hmm. So I was in gone Philly, for almost. You went to Philly. Yeah, I went to Philly for yeah. that. So I was gone almost four weeks. Yeah. Uh, or four months, excuse four me. Four months. Yeah. And then I came back, and there was discussion when I was with my therapist in rehab. What am I going to do when he's home? Yeah. He's there when I get back, and I've had all these like bleeding heart, you know, heart on my sleeve, carrying a torch kind of things. What, yeah. What am I going to do? Do I want to have a talk with him? Should he be there when I get home? Yeah. Should he move on or something? So, and you did come to visit when I was there. You I came, came to mom. visit and I discussed it with your parents too. Do yeah. I stay? Do I leave? Like, yeah. you know what I, I want to do? What's best for Steven as well as take care of myself too. Mm -hmm. And I was working. I got the job at the restaurant and yeah. I have been working there the whole time and actually stayed there up until I took this job. Yeah. You were there eight years. So. Yeah. So I came home and then just got, got into my own recovery routine and it was yeah. like mental health and drug and alcohol. So I'm going to AA meetings. I'm going to therapy. I had three therapists when I started. You know, once I went drink, once I went go crazy, once I went puke, like, yeah. and then eventually that tapered down and eventually I got a part-time job and then a full-time job and then a job where I'm at now and I've had the same job since. Yeah. And got a car finally, got my license back and life kind of just started to go on. Yeah. And it happened with both of us too. I got a job. I stayed with the job. I kind of like piggybacked off of you with the car. He had a car. So... I remember the first day he's like, oh, yeah, you can use the car. I was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. You know, we're not together out, yet, you know. No, but it was like, yeah, go ahead. Whatever. Yeah. And then we started taking some trips. We took a vacation together, a long one, still platonic. We went to Santa Claus, Indiana. Yeah. On a road trip. Yeah. Eight days by ourselves and nothing. Nothing. No. Nothing. Still completely oblivious on my part. I still, I didn't think of him that way at all. I still had no idea, and I remember when you told me. You're like, you know what? Let the chips fall where they may. I'm just going to tell you. And he was like, yeah. I have feelings for you. Now, what you do with this information is on you. I just have to tell you, and, you know, we'll go from there. It's not, you know, if you if you don't feel the same way, it's not like you have to move or anything like that. But I have to get on with my life, something like that, you yeah. know. And uh, I was like, oh, well, and I think I said, well... I'm just not looking for that in general. Like, yeah. it's not you. It's just in general. Meanwhile, I'm talking to a guy on my phone, yeah. phone you know, because I didn't know what to say. You know, it, it took me off guard. Mm -hmm. So I got that out. And then was it? It wasn't very long. It after wasn't that. very long after that. No, it wasn't. And I, I remember he came home. He, that was a turning point for him in his life where he was like, I have to get on with my life. And he started, um, well, dating in his way. You like, could loosely you know, call it dating, but you know, yeah, meeting people on the phone. We'll put it that way. That's how everyone meets. Anyone. But that's how everybody meets. I know. But you make it sound so trashy. Swipe left. Swipe it right. It was trashy. But anyway, they were nice guys. They were one offs. I hadn't dated. And he in kept years. this from me too. I didn't know this at all. He was always there when I left work. He was always there when I got home. Well, one night. He wasn't there when I got home. And I get home late, like 11, you know, and he wasn't there. And I remember, like, where is he? Like, what? what where is he? And I, I don't know. You said you were, like, went for coffee after a meeting or something like that. I don't know. And I just, something wasn't right, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. And that continued on for a bit. And then I started finding myself, like, wondering who what he's doing you know and who he's talking to and then i was like why am i feeling this way why am mm. i you know and um as time went on i remember walking home from work one night and i remember stopping at the at the uh telephone pole and i'm like wow like i think i like him <laughs> like i think yeah I, re I have feelings for him but i i remember that was the moment for me mm -hmm. i was on my way home it was very cold out and i stopped and i'm like oh god you know, mm -hmm. I still didn't tell you. I just waited him out. He waited. He waited the bitch out. I just waited the bitch out. You know. Mm -hmm. And then one thing led to another, and you know. So that would have been. So you moved in a couple years in twenty twelve, but yeah. then we didn't start dating until twenty fourteen. Yeah, it was a couple. So years it was a couple later. years we lived with my parents, and then within like six months of we started actually dating, dating, we moved here. We, moved, we got our own place because we already yeah. lived together a couple years, yeah. so it wasn't. It sounds fast, like six months after we started, but we had already known each other and we knew our habits and yeah. our idiosyncrasies with sharing a space. So we really didn't have a hard time adjusting to living together because we already had. Like, mm -hmm. it wasn't too too much of anything like that. I remember the day I was going to tell him that I, I, why don't we give this a try, maybe? Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't know. I Maybe I, I, 
I don't know if I feel for you or not. I don't, he's like, look, he's like, look, he's like, we are in this closed room inches apart from each other day after day after day. He's like, let's just, let's just give it a try. And I'm like, well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I made my case. You yeah. made your case. I made my case. So. And there was no looking back from then, from that no. on. And it's been pretty good since. I have to say, it's been it's been pretty good. We've it's dealt with good. the things that weren't good. Yeah, at the beginning, I found myself off my rocker. I was an extremely jealous um, lover at first. I don't, I'm not like that. I don't know where these, are. now, fairly you know, fairly new to being clean, too. I mean, my emotions were still kind of raw. I mean, mm -hmm. you're talking a couple years, but I never... I haven't been in a relationship for years. And, and years. neither had I. I hadn't been in a relationship yeah. since my previous boyfriend in 2007. Yeah. So it had been six, seven years for me. But, I... like, being a snoop and being jealous and be, that... I never experienced that before. And I was extremely smothering, extremely needy and clingy at the beginning to the point where we decided to go to couples therapy because I knew, I knew it was pushing him away. I knew it. But I... It was like I couldn't help it. It was very yeah. strange. The it couples was therapist was a great... First of all, she was oh, a great therapist. It Second fantastic. of all, it was a great idea to go. We did all our homework. Now, you have yeah. to do what they tell you to do in couples therapy. Yeah. You can't just yeah. go and come out fixed. Yeah. Like, we did our daily check-ins. Yeah, we did. And we talked about stuff. And now we do a lot of the stuff we did in therapy, but it's just like... It's automatic. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just easy breezy. Yeah. A lot of it seems Mickey Mouse, but it, it works. We don't go to bed without checking in. You know, and it, it's not like official. It's not like, how are you let's today? sit down, and how are you? Yeah, no, how are no, you doing It's today? like between handfuls of popcorn. Yeah, how are yeah. you feeling today? How are you doing? Da, da, da. And that's the time where we know, like, okay, this if something's bothering us or whatever. You gotta get it off your but chest, we, here's the moment. We, if the day doesn't go by that we don't do that. But no, it was a it was a changer. It, it really put things in. It helped me immensely. And I mean, I can't imagine mm -hmm. anything. I can't. I don't know. I can't imagine my life without him. So I, I don't know. I know he's like my right arm. It's just, and then as we're it's good. all good. It really is, you know. And we're in a good spot because mm -hmm. I, I can do the arms and legs, and then you're the brain. If I go, nuts, <laughs> if I go nuts, you're the mind. No, we do compliment. And each I can other do the heavy lifting. Like that. We do. Yeah. No, we do. Between the two of us, we make a. And his person. family welcomed me in. Um, where I'm like a part of the family now, and and I got I, jealous because I thought they liked him better than me. Yeah, he did do that for a while. I was like, they like talking to him. I was just new. <laughs> I was new. You would put them through hell. New and novel. You know? My one nephew was obsessed with him. Yeah, absolutely obsessed with him. He only oh. he'll ask for Mark. He's like, hi, where's Mark? <laughs> Doesn't even ask for me. Yeah, yeah. But that's how we met. We we did meet in rehab, and you know they. Now, we didn't get together in rehab. That's we the difference. We met in rehab. We yeah. did not get together. Or, no. There was nothing like that You don't get all. together and, like, hook up in the bathroom and no. leave together and go live on love. Yeah, like, no, that's not That's not how that it happened. Um, we but, got our shit together, and then we got together yeah. afterwards. Yeah, we did. So. So, I mean, that's kind of the story of how we met. You that's know? Our, our fairy tale romance of how we got together. Yeah, it's an interesting story. I think it is. It is. It's it's not. I like actually can't others. imagine it any other way, actually. No. What is that? God bless the it. broken road. Yeah. Isn't that a song? Mm. Something like that. But do you remember the first question you asked me when we got together? How fat can I get before you'll leave? I was shocked. I he was dead serious too. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> I'm like, oh, and I laughed it off. He's like, no, I'm serious. I'm like, what? And this is before, I didn't know anything about eating disorders at this point. Yeah. I had my own bout with it, but I never, like, got treatment or looked into it. I never realized what it was until I met you. Yeah. And then I had learned all about that, you know, and uh, then, so it was a serious question. Yeah. Like, you wanted a, you want, he wanted a pound. Yeah, he wanted, wanted a, a weight. weight. And but, I'm like... But I felt pretty satisfied, because I was Jigunda when I was in rehab, because all they do is yeah, feed you starch and lithium. Yeah. So I had blown up, and then that was the fattest I ever was when I met him. So I figure as long as I'm that size or smaller, I'm probably in the clear. Mm -hmm. So I sorted it out myself. Yeah. Anyway, sorry about that. We a little long winded. Yeah, today. we've been talking so long. I'm sorry about that. I know. That. We'll, we'll, After we'll, we're we'll, so yeah, we'll wrap it we'll up. We'll tie it up. Here. I don't know. Yeah. I I got into it. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, our favorite topic, which is ourselves. I know. So right? you know, I know. It had to. But it's a love story. It is uh, perhaps not a traditional 
love story, but which but a love story. But whose traditional love stories are boring? Nah, I seriously I don't know. I often think like where my life would have went if if your parents hadn't taken me in, if you hadn't taken me in, if we hadn't got together, you know. And mm -hmm. I don't even want to think of how it would have been because this is this is a, a good life. <laughs> yeah, we have a good life. Yeah. We do. Well, before the schmaltz police come in. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for watching. Thank you. Please do subscribe. Hit the like button. You can follow Mark and I on Facebook at Smoky Steve Space and Mark or on Instagram at Smoky Steve and Mark. Our email address and all our contact information is listed below. Thank you all for listening and for watching if you've watched this far. <laughs> uh, we will see you tomorrow for Coffee Talk. Oh, yes. And take care. Happy Friday. Yes. Bye. Yes, it was great spending time with you. Thank you for spending time with us. And remember, Stay positive, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye. Ciao.